This village Gamsutal is located on the top of a mountain 1500 meters above the sea level. This place is so far from civilization that people started to abandon it in search for a better life. By 2007 there was only one inhabitant left here and he called himself the president of the village. Yeah, this kind of situations happen in this Republic of Russia. This is Dagestan. It's my first day in Mahachkala and I already feel how everything here is so different from the rest of Russia. People even speak Russian differently with a really distinctive Caucasus accent which is impersonated and made fun of in the rest of Russia. Not in a bad way though. And I thought that this accent was an exaggeration of comedy shows and jokes. Brother. But I really do hear people speaking with that very accent here and that's so funny and so unique. So let's see what else in Dagestan is different from the rest of Russia, except the language. Breakfast first and I will try the traditional cuisine of Dagestan. All the regions of the Caucasus have similar cuisine, but each of them must be tried. The view from the restaurant. And there is one thing that I found in the menu which is really curious. It says breaking dishes. So you can break small cup for 100 rubles, big cup for 150. You can break a teapot for 1,000 rubles. You can break a plate of different sizes. You can break a cup for ice cream. You can break anything in this restaurant for these prices. The most iconic dish of Dagestan is named Chudu, which is a flatbread with different toppings that you can choose. I chose some greens. As I mentioned, the foods of different regions of the Caucasus are a bit similar. For example, in kabardino balkaria there is a dish similar to this and it's named Hichin, which is also flatbread. In Chechnya, and actually I arrived from Chechnya yesterday, you can see my vlogs from Chechnya, I will leave the links below this video. This is named Hingalsh and here it's named Chudu. All of them are flatbread with different toppings that you can choose. It can be some greens, sometimes potato with greens or cottage cheese, um, even pumpkin, but they are a bit different. Dagestan isn't a popular destination for traveling, as international travel advisories tell their citizens to travel as far as possible from this place, because they consider it dangerous. Moreover, Dagestan is also one of the poorest and undeveloped regions of Russia. However, one of the most scenic landscapes of the country are located here, and they say that Dagestan is a hidden gem of the Caucasus. All the beautiful places are located outside of Mahachkala, but Let's get to know the capital of the region first. The best thing that Mahachkala has is located just behind me. The city is full of beaches. Most of them are wild and unequipped, but they have their own charm. And there are popular ones like Polar Bear, Birch and Central. Those are the names of the beaches where you can go swimming. And Mahachka is a very popular destination for the people from the Caucasus especially. They come here for swimming. This is one of my most favorite smells. By the way, the Caspian Sea is said to have a lot of iodine and that it's very healthy, not only to swim here, but just to breathe this air. 
and it's so nice actually. Это местный Что? спорт? Местный спорт? Нет. Это у нас норматив. Норматив по физическому. А, серьезно? Конечно. То есть спасатели должны сдавать? Естественно, каждый месяц. Ого. И все сдают? Вам давно надо было. Руки, он долго все. не попадал. Классно. Dagestan is the most multinational region of Russia. There are about 60 ethnic groups living here and 14 official languages excluding Russian. The main religion in the Republic is Islam. However, it's not necessary to dress according to Islamic canons here, but men wearing shorts or girls in mini skirts or with deep necklines can cause discontent among the locals. Female smoking in public is considered indecent as well. Otherwise, a simple rule applies in Dagestan. Be polite and respect the local traditions. And you're good to travel here. In the rest part of Russia, Dagestan is most famous for its crazy drivers. Everyone says that the drivers are reckless, don't follow any rules, always drive on the red light, never let the pedestrians cross the road. But for the time being that I spent here in the capital of Dagestan, I haven't seen anything like that. So that might be just a stereotype about Dagestan and other parts of Russia. But again, I've talked to the taxi drivers and they told me that in the mountain areas and in smaller towns or villages of Dagestan, yeah, no one ever follows the rules. And a funny thing, when I took a taxi, I took the front seat and I wanted to buckle the seat, there was no belt. And I was like, where's the belt? And he said, why do you need it? And then in another taxi, when I buckled the seat, he asked me, why are you doing this? Only the driver has to do it. <laughs> Anywhere I go, I see these crashed cars and many people drive have crashed cars and I guess they don't repair them because there is no money to do that. Mahachkala doesn't look like a capital a capital of anything. It looks like a small village. Dagestan truly is a place of contrasts. In 2016, in fact, this region was named the second poorest region of the country in terms of family welfare. And the population with incomes below the substance minimum, in other words, at the poverty level, is around 10%, which is a really high percentage. There are some nice areas in the city, somewhere there in the city center, but most part of the city is pretty depressive. Well, no words needed, you can see everything yourself. Well, there is actually nothing to see in Mahachkala and everyone comes here to see what's hidden beyond the capital. I've had enough of this city, I think you too. So let's go and see why Dagestan is named the hidden gem of the Caucasus. My goal in this trip is to find the ghost village Gamsutal that I talked about in the beginning of the video. On my way there I stopped at other places as well though, as it was impossible not to stop when you see beauties like this. 
The Sulak Canyon is carved by the Sulak River and it's located some 100 kilometers away from Mahachkala. The canyon attains a depth of over a mile. By the way, it's 6 to 3 meters deeper than the Grand Canyon in the US. What a joy to take a zipline ride over it! After flying over the canyon, you can also go down and take a boat trip. I arrived to a restaurant owned by Habib Nurmagomedov. He's the most famous person in Dagestan now. And he's the most famous Dagestani person and all over the world, I think. So Habib owns several restaurants and cafes in Dagestan. He doesn't work here, but he bought the ready business. And I was told that he came to this restaurant this week to see how everything is going on here and to have some lunch and that he comes here often. Now he actually lives here in Dagestan and in Moscow and travels back and there all the time. And in this restaurant they cook trout and now I'm gonna try it. While we were driving, I couldn't keep my eyes away from the views. Just look at this water reservoir. It appeared here after the construction of the hydroelectric power plant. When the dam was created, it flooded a whole village. So actually at the bottom of this reservoir, there are gardens, houses, trees, and even a church. But now it's just a place that tourists love to stop at and make pictures. Well. Why not? I mean, you don't even need any Instagram filters here. Just look at the water's color. Russian roads are crazy, especially on the Jeep. The Republic of Dagestan is home to a number of abandoned ghost villages. Gamsutl is the most famous one. It's even unofficially called the Russian Machu Picchu. Let me know in the comments if you think that it does look like it. The village is located on the very top of the mountain, surrounded by steep slopes. So you will have to sweat a little to get here. I'm walking on the main street of Gamsutel now. It was quite a big village, by the way. And I'm really surprised that people lived here until 2000s and even until 2015, because it seems like this village is abandoned for centuries. Wow. It doesn't seem like there were people living here just a few years ago. But now only cows live here. Uh, you can go. Y you can go. Keep going. Good cow. There is grass growing everywhere and the nature takes over this place. The population of Gamsutl was growing and life was blooming here. There was everything in this village, shops, schools, hospitals. But over years, people started to leave this place. The reason is obvious. It's so far from civilization and they were looking for a better life, opportunities to work and study. And by the year of 2000, there were only 200 people left from thousands that lived here. By 2002, there was 17 people left. 
and by 2007 only one person lived here. The last inhabitant of Gamsutal died in 2015. He lived here alone for nine years. His name is Abdul Jalil Abdul Jalilov. He left to the city once, but then he came back as he didn't like the busy life there. He said that being alone isn't that bad. He had a lot of time to read, to pray and to reflect. He was also a very hospitable man and he gave tea and honey from his apiary to all the travelers here. Many people started to visit the last inhabitant of Gamsutal to see his life and to listen to his stories. And thanks to him, this ghost village is now famous all over the world. We're now actually going inside of the house of the last inhabitant of this town. He also called himself a president of this town because he lived here alone just by himself. Now everything here is destroyed, of course. You can only see some stones and dirt, but he did live in this big house. It actually has three floors. Look at this beautiful balcony though. Imagine having this view from a balcony. This is the former kitchen. Imagine having breakfast with this view. And he did that every morning. While walking in this abandoned place, you're imagining how only several years ago there was a vivid life and this place was full of people. And now you can only hear the wind and birds. This really makes you conscious about the ticking clock. On my way back to Mahachkala, I also visited Gunnip village. It's unbelievable that this place is located 1500 meters above the sea level, but looks like a typical Russian town. You would never say that you are in the mountains. There are around 3000 people living here and they enjoy the sun almost for 300 days a year. Believe me, it's a huge luck in Russia. Not only the locals enjoy the sun, but also the gifts of nature. Here I ate the most delicious porridge in my life. It's made of apricots and you mix it with a paste made of apricot seeds. Mmm, yummy! Then it was time to go back to Mahachkala. But I passed the capital and drove somewhere else because I wanted to see today's sunset at the very unusual natural monument. Just 20 minutes drive from Mahachkala there is this curious natural monument sand dunes of Sarikum. It feels like I was teleported. Just some moments ago I was in a city and now I'm in a desert. I can't believe that this place is located so close to the urban area. The biggest question that you will have is how come is this sand dune here? It's not located on a desert territory, nor on the sea coast, just in the middle of a steep. By the way, this is the only sand dune in the world which isn't moving anywhere. It's here all the time at the same spot and no one knows exactly how it appeared here. Dagestan is far from being one of the most developed regions of Russia. It has so many economic and other problems. Its reputation in other parts of Russia and abroad isn't so good. But locals would never move to the capital of Russia and they would prefer to stay and live here because... Interesting 
за его горы, за наше единство, за наши братские отношения. Вау! Have you watched till the end? If so, you can like the video, I will appreciate it a lot. Meanwhile, I also made some other videos for you, you can check them out here.